For 25 years, Charity Preview has dedicated a night of elegance for raising funds for those less fortunate. More than $100 million have gone to children's charities since Charity Preview started in 1976. And tonight, the tradition continues at the North American International Auto Show. Good evening and welcome to the 45th Annual Auto Show Charity Preview. I'm Shayna Humphreys. And I'm Jeff Skaversky. We are live over the next hour from Huntington Place at the Detroit Auto Show as we bring flashy cars and fashion together all for a great cause. Of course, tonight's Charity Preview kicks off as the UAW is on strike with the big three Detroit automakers, GM Ford and Stellantis. As you saw last night on CBS News Detroit, at the stroke of midnight, the UAW went on strike as it could not come to terms with an agreement with the big three. Yeah, but of course, tonight is all about raising money for children's charities. And this event has raised a lot of money, over $100 million, in fact, over the past 25 years alone. So we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. We're going to tell you all about the charities that do benefit. And we're going to show you all that there is to see this year at the auto show. And there is a lot. You can feel the buzz building in yeah. this building. We've been here for the last few hours uh -huh. getting ready for this hour long show you can feel it behind us right now you have an EV experience cars are ripping through the area <laughs> everyone here is dressed to the nines a big exciting night here at the auto show and of course we have team coverage throughout the evening with Chris Ledeen, Sandra Ali as well as Lauren Winfrey and Kelly Vaughn. We are going to get started with Chris and Sandra who are hanging out over at the Chevrolet display. Hey guys. Hey. hey, Jeff and Shana, so good to be here with you. What a gorgeous night. This is incredible. Yeah, you mentioned we're in the Chevy display. We have the Corvette behind us and to our sides. And people are like hopping into these things. They're so happy. You see the look on their face when they get in there like, I'm in a Corvette. This is great. It is absolutely fantastic. I mean, you talk about a red carpet. The red carpet is rolled out. Jeff mentioned that folks are dressed to the nines, glitz, glamour, and you can't forget about the music. No, there's going to be some great music a little later on. Of course, they have Jennifer Hudson, and they have Shaggy a little later on, too. Wasn't me. That's right. You can hear him sing it for real a little bit later. But we have more people down here as well. We sure do. And the Detroit Youth Choir actually kicked things off as well. So you can feel the excitement in the air, the shiny cars, the people. Everyone is just looking absolutely beautiful. We can't wait to get the night started. We're going to go ahead and check in now with Lauren and Kelly. Hey, you guys. Hey guys, uh, we are just so excited for such a beautiful night. Kelly and I were actually a little nervous prior to coming here. We didn't want to have on the same dress. Yeah. So we, we had to text about that, call about that. Right, you don't want to match your best friend yeah. here, but you also have to look as good as the cars. You do. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be talking to some people about the different fashions. We're going to be checking in with some of the brands here, talking to them about the awesome models that they've got that are going to hit the market soon here. Yeah, and, and in addition to the cars looking beautiful, everyone looks so amazing from the sparkles to the shimmers the feathers everyone just looks so gorgeous this is a beautiful night in Detroit and we are so excited to be a part of it and we can't wait to uh, show off some fashions out here because that's one thing about Detroiters I'm from Detroit Kelly and one thing I know about Detroit is we know how to dress that we is know how to dress can we can we get a shot of her shoes or is that asking yeah, too much I don't know <laughs> I don't know iPhone, that's okay. Ignore the iPhone. <laughs> do a little shoe cam here gotta show off the shoes you know, I just wanted to have a pop of color with the black, so I figured I would do a little something no, on the you, shoe. I should be interviewing you about style. No, you, you look know amazing. what else is fun here? It's people all dolled up, yes. but then like riding around in these cars, going yes. off-roading. It's it's a nice uh, vibe here. You got the adventurous, the classy. It's nice. Yeah, and we're all dolled up for a really incredible cause as well. Yes, raising charity, uh, raising funds tonight for charity, and that's always an amazing thing to do and so we're just so excited to be a part of this and kelly you look amazing let's give it up for the purple give it up for the purple here. Oh, i'm stop. here for it i'm here for it you look amazing but you know this uh event it has raised over 125 or 123 million dollars incredible since they started this event that was back in 1976 so yeah. just another night continuing that tradition of raising money for a great cause, all the money going to a slew of children's charities. Yes, and this is a premier event in Detroit. So many people mark this day on their calendar, look forward to it. They can't wait to come. And I mean, if you look around, you can see why. Yes, the excitement <laughs> tonight. And you know, we can't 
ignore the strikes and the layoffs. Yeah. It's on the minds of people yes. here for sure. But people tell us they really just want to focus on the fundraising because this is a tumultuous time. Yes. But this event here is for a great cause. Mm -hmm. When I was walking in, I did see some of the UAW members outside. And, you know, they're being very vocal about what they have going on, too, but also be very respectful of this event and what it means to the city of Detroit and the charities that it benefits as well. And we're planning on talking to some pretty uh, head honchos here earlier. They're running us through the list of interviews, so I can't wait to hear more of those interviews. Let's head it over to Chris and Sandra. Yeah, that's right. We're going to be talking to the head honcho of GM North America in a little bit. But there's so much to do down here. A lot of interactive things this year. There's the EV track, the Powering Michigan track. I was lucky enough to get in the Hummer yesterday, and they basically floor it for 300 feet. And with the EV, you can just feel that in your stomach, and then they weave through a serpentine track. And they also have, like, a mountain. Ford Bronco has, like, a mountain. And they take you up, and they take you down. You're rocking and rolling. It looks like a lot of fun. I don't know if you can fit in that Jeep in your dress zone. I, I'm, I can try. I can definitely try. I, I can kick these here off and slide right in. I got to tell you, compared to last year, there is so much here as far as interactive displays go, so many more. Um, and there's this big focus on tech and just moving forward. You kind of feel like you've stepped into the Jetsons a little bit when you step out into the showroom floor. You sure do. And talking about the Jetsons, there's even flying vehicles here. Now, most of these cars and vehicles you'll be able to buy next year. The flying vehicle, I'm not sure just yet. There's a few logistics they have to work around on that one but you know what i think it costs two hundred thousand dollars the one they have down here which is a lot of money but some of the suvs and whatnot down here cost about 150 so it's not that much more and you can fly you know it's interesting you mentioned two hundred thousand dollars i have my eye on that cadillac escalade <laughs> that we, we saw yesterday starting at 165 but it is sweet you definitely get a glimpse into the future when you're out here looking at these beautiful cars yeah and there's a lot of people milling about here taking a lot of pictures because this is the future of the auto industry and that's one of the things we're going to talk about today as well. Yeah, we know EVs are the wave of the future, but what else is in store for the auto industry? We're going to find that out as the evening goes on. But really tonight, it's all about this charity gala and the money raised over $100 million in the last 20 years alone. Yeah, the amount of money raised in one night alone is absolutely incredible. You know, we talked about the glitz and the glamour and the fashion and the music, but what it comes down to is it's all about raising money for children, and it stays in the city of Detroit, which is absolutely fantastic. All right, I think now we're going to go ahead and send it back to Jeff and Shana. Yeah, thank you, you guys. It's really, the energy is really picking up. It is electric around here, and very much that pun was intended because we do happen to be standing at the Powering Michigan Electric Learning Center. And I don't know if you can tell if our photographer Chris can show you, but we're surrounded by charging stations. Electric vehicles are obviously a huge topic increasingly every year at the auto show, and it is no different this year. A lot of very innovative models, and everyone around here is checking out these fueling stations, or I guess we should call them charging charging stations now and they're also charging up with some food and drink as you see. <laughs> and you certainly see all the brand new cars. They look beautiful yeah. from the new EVs of course to the yeah. old school vehicles. Lots to see here at the Detroit Auto Show which generates estimated 500 million dollars for the economy which is just incredible on top of what we're talking about the 100 million dollars it's generated for charity from the boys and girls yeah. clubs in southeastern Michigan to Detroit Pal, you mm -hmm. name it. Such a great cause for children. We have so many things to talk about tonight. We're going to introduce you to lots of guests throughout this hour coming up here on CBS News Detroit at the charity event here at Huntington Place in downtown Detroit. Well, we're back here at the big auto show charity gala. We have Terry Radigan, the VP of Corporate Giving for Chevrolet. Thanks a lot for joining us, Terry. It is such a pleasure to be here. What a fabulous night in Detroit. Thanks for being here. Well, it is fabulous. Tell us what this show means to the auto industry. It means everything. This is our hometown. It's in the shadows of our headquarters right down the street here. And it's a celebration of our, of our industry, of the people that make it happen, and of the city where we're headquartered. So this is everything to us. You know, and we mentioned a couple of times earlier, this is all about the spirit of giving because we can't forget why we're all here tonight. Great way to put it is the cars are the stars, but it's really all about the kids and the charities that benefit uh, from all of the generosity. And I happen to think Detroit 
and Greater Detroit is the most generous metropolitan area in the world, and tonight is another example of that. Yeah, definitely the community comes together to raise money. Tell us why it's important for the auto industry to have an event like this to give money back to the community. Well, it's, it's really a responsibility. We're uh, so blessed to have the jobs that we have in the city where we do, but we know that there's there's tough times. You know, uh, COVID was tough and inflation has been tough. And so we have to give back. We have to give rise to those uh, that are less fortunate because that's the workforce of tomorrow. We invest in them. It's not charity. It's an investment. It really is. And we talk about what an important night this is for the city of Detroit, obviously all of southeastern Michigan. So many people look forward to this night. It's like the Detroit party of the year. Have you had a chance to walk around a little bit and kind of pick out some of your favorite spots? I have, and I've been here a few times this week already, so I've had uh, my, my share of steps inside this building. And you're right, it's just... Um it's truly a Detroit thing. It really is. And uh, it means a lot to the entire industry. And then um, to, to culminate it with this charity preview and then open the doors to the public tomorrow, it's just uh, one of my favorite times of the year, to be honest with you. Well, we're in the Chevrolet display right now, and there's Corvettes all around, naturally. And there's one Corvette in particular you can sit in. So I've been watching people open the door, sit in there, and the smile that comes to their <laughs> face is incredible. When you see that, when you work for the company, you see somebody get such enjoyment of just sitting in a Corvette. How's that? make you feel well it's it makes me feel really good and then when you get people that get a chance to test drive the Corvette or any number of our electric vehicles or our pickup trucks or our Tahoe's and they get out and they have that smile on their face uh, very gratifying for people like me who've been around for a long long time in this industry you know as far as the charity preview goes compared to last year it's incredible to see the size of the crowd that's here already tonight when you're looking around and you see how, I mean, the city has pretty much come back to life since the pandemic. What is this like to see this number of people here tonight? It's so exciting. Like I said, our headquarters is, you know, just a half a mile away. And we're starting to see all that, like you mentioned, all that foot traffic come back. And downtown was booming when, when COVID hit, and it's booming again. And we're proud to be a part of it. GM's been headquartered in Detroit for like 112 years. So we're, we're part of the fabric and uh, couldn't be happier about the way it's looking. Yeah, it's good to see the vibrancy in the downtown core. Now, this is also about the future of the auto industry. Obviously, EVs playing a huge part down here. I mean, what can you tell us other than EVs that Chevrolet is working on? Or is that where the main development is going right now? That's where a lot of it is going. And in fact, you talked about the Corvettes already. Well, we have the Corvette E-Ray over my left shoulder, and that is the first Corvette that's ever combined a V8 engine and then electrified performance enhancement. It's the first Corvette that ever has had all-wheel drive, um, and it is just a fabulous driving machine. So that's a little hint at the electrification that's happening, but it's a transition over time. So we've still got a V8 engine in there, got a little electricity in there, and that's kind of the, the ambidextrous way that we're approaching this thing right now. Yeah. You still got that sound. You still exactly. got that roar. Yeah, a little something for everyone. Precisely. Thank you so much. We're oh, so glad you stopped such by a to pleasure. chat with us. We appreciate such a pleasure. it. Thank All right, well, we're obviously talking about Corvettes. We're going to switch things over and talk a little Buick now and check in with Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Hey guys, we're actually going to be talking about all things fashion over here because, like I mentioned earlier, we have to look as good as the cars. I'm here with Mark Ferris from Von Mauer. Okay, so how does fashion play in event? This is not charity, but how does fashion play in? Well, fashion sets the tone for everything. And I think you'll agree that it adds a little element of fun to the night. And it's so great to look at the cars and see everybody here excited, but also what are they wearing and how is that playing off? And I have to say, Von Mauer dressed a lot of us CBS News Detroit ladies. But, I almost picked that uh, All right, so we're doing... <laughs> So thank you guys so much for the um, styles because we're feeling beautiful and confident. Um, you've been coming to this event for a long time, right? Yeah, so I was born and raised in, in Detroit and I've been coming since I was a little girl, always super interested in the dresses. So my job at Von Mar has been a dream and getting to dress, help dress people like you. And I love your eggplant. In fact, one of the ladies was stopping and telling you all about the color and um, all of those beautiful gowns. But this one's great off the shoulder, that beautiful cascading ruffle. So my job's so easy and fun, dressing and making people look pretty for things. Well, y'all had a great selection. It was hard to pick. 
Now, when you're looking around here, are you seeing any trends that maybe people are going to want to follow for their future events? Yes, we're seeing lots of ruffles, lots of sequins. I think you'll see some of that coming up. Um, and beautiful, bold colors as well. And then some nice fall colors like your eggplant or aubergine. Um, so many great trends. So many ruffles and off the shoulder, all of those things. And Von Mar has such a great selection of all of those things. So, yeah. All right, awesome. Thank you so much, Marnie. Okay, now we're going to walk on over. We got to be talk to Lauren here. She's got some more fashion to yes, talk about. Yes, I right? do. I am going to be talking with, well, I am speaking with Cherie Brunel. Yes, she is a stylist, born and raised in Detroit, recently moved back two days ago from Miami. Welcome back. How does it feel to be here and especially to be here at uh, the charity preview? It's an amazing feeling. Like I said, I just got back and I've been gone for nine years. So to be back home is amazing. I feel at home. I feel like like I'm family again and to be here at this amazing show is awesome. It is. It really is. And Shree, you look incredible. I love the sequin. I love the blue. Okay. So you're a stylist and yes. we've kind of been looking at some of the looks tonight. What is like, what would you say is incredible, like really in right now uh, for an event like tonight? Well, it's definitely going to be the textures. You see a lot of velvet. You see a lot of sequins. You see a lot of um, bell hems as well. And then you have a couple plunge uh, necklines as well that I saw. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, anything else, anything we should be looking out for tonight or as we plan for future galas, anything that is like that is the thing you want to make sure you have on. Is there a color, something like yes. that? So if you're looking to stand out a little bit, you can go with something like a sapphire blue or a galactic blue. You also will see a beautiful yellow coming into the stores, like she said, at Von Mar and also at Dillard's and a couple of the other department stores as well. And then uh, again, if you want to do some texture, maybe do a little bit of ruffle, do a little bit of tool just to have a, a bit of something extra to come out to this event. Yes, I love it. And sure, you just confirmed I got the tool on, so I did something right I today. I love it. I love it, especially with the shoes and the tool and the necklace. It's amazing. Thank you so much, and you look incredible. Thank Everyone you. looks so amazing tonight. I'm going to send it on over to Jeff and Shayna. I know they have so much more in store for us. So you guys, I'll let you take it away. Well, thank you, ladies. We have a couple guests joining us here on the Powering Michigan stage. We have Rod Alberts from the Detroit Auto Dealers Association, the executive director. And we also have Dave Coulter, the Oakland County executor. We appreciate both of you being here with us this evening as we talk about this amazing event. And your event, this is really your Super Bowl, right? You put this on, you've done this for years. How special is this night, and does this ever get old? It, it, it really does, and I've been doing it for over 30 years now, and it's the one night a year. We would have a lot of events in Detroit, but this is the one night we can really celebrate, you know, our industry, our livelihood. This is what we do, and this show is important to the city to showcase to the world of who we are. We're the mobility capital, not just car capital, mobility capital, and we're moving it forward. So to have this for the kids and the children of Detroit and Southeast Michigan and the state of Michigan, that's really what it's all about tonight. It is an incredible event. Rod, you've been running it for 30 years. Dave, you've been attending for quite some time yourself. How long have you been coming to the auto show? I mean, since I was a child, right? Yeah. If you're from Detroit, you go to the auto show, you see the cars. So, you know, this is just what we do. Yeah, and it's really evolved in that time. How would you compare those childhood memories, the Detroit auto show back then, compared to today? You know, the thing is, it has evolved, and especially over the last few years, as we've adjusted the, the time of season and yeah. the, th the experiences that you can have here. But Detroit is resilient, and we keep finding a way to do things better and better. And Rod and his group do an amazing job of reinventing and staying current. And it's just a great time down here. It's a different time than 20 years ago, but it's a great time. Every year this event evolves, and this year among the new experiences is this EV experience right behind us. Have you had a chance to test drive the uh, course yet? I've tried a little bit of everything. You know, we have seven or eight different activation rides you can get in. And what's it's, your favorite? Oh, boy, now you're going to get me in trouble. Okay. But, <laughs> oh, okay. We got that, that Hummer over there, that electric Hummer, that EV is pretty nice and uh, very popular right now. But here's the thing. The world is moving towards that. There's a lot to be done in between. But we have to learn more about electrification and where it's headed at. But our job in Detroit and this show is to lead the way and make some things happen. So tonight... It's a special night for kids, but more so, we're taking a show to a new level, and we're moving it forward, like David said, we're going to make some things happen in Oakland County, in Southeast Michigan, and in the state with mobility capital and what we're doing. 
Yeah, Dave, how about you? What have you been seeing? What is one of your favorite things about the auto show this year? You know, um, I love to see all the electric vehicles, yes. right? Because we know that that is the future, and that's where the industry is headed. And so, you know, I'm not 100% up to speed on it. We're trying to figure it out like the auto companies are and like you are, Rod. So, so just getting a, a, a better feel for what they are and how they operate and what they look like. I'm going to get a chance to drive one in a, in a little while. Uh, I, think, I think that's what I'm most excited about. Absolutely. So I'm curious to know, there are, I'm guessing, thousands of people here who generate hundreds of millions of dollars for charity, but actually putting this thing together, wow, just how difficult is that to put this all together and make this night happen? Well, you know, when you really take the week on, we've got three or four different shows going on this whole two-week period. We've got uh, media days with all the unveilings, we've got tech days, electrification, and then we got charity preview and public days. So this is really the kickoff to public days, getting hundreds of thousands of people downtown, get excited about what we, what we do. And this particular event is a lot of work because, you know, we got to get the tuxes out and we got a lot of uh, <laughs> coverage. Like well, you look amazing. Well, you did well. Kind of, it's an old tux, yeah, what are you going to do? But the fun part is that we, we really all come together for this. And it makes it easier for us as we put on with the DADA uh, as long as we're working together. And that's what Southeast Michigan does, what we do in Oakland County. And David, and we're just happy to be here. And this is really a labor of love, so I really don't look at it too much work. It's not work. Today, a little bit here and there, but not too bad. Well, we're so glad the work was done, and of course, all of this is to raise money for children's charities. Rod and Dave, thanks so much for joining us here today. Much more to come from the 45th annual Auto Show Charity Preview. We're going to take a quick break. to the 45th annual Auto Show Charity Preview. We are joined now by Kelvin Squires, who is the CEO of Centerline Electric. And we were just saying a few minutes ago, it is electric in here, the atmosphere. We are surrounded by electric vehicles, and it's kind of a buzzword this year. Tell me about the involvement of Centerline with the Auto Show. Sure, well, uh, Centerline, we're part of NECA, mm -hmm. and uh, associated with the IBEW Local 58. And we are charging full ahead into our EV infrastructure. Yeah. So we're, we're enjoying it. Uh, it's going to be great for the country, and it's going to be great for, for all our, our, our uh, new adaptees that come in, yeah. into the electro space. What, what specific role does your organization play in all of this? Sure. So, so I'm a contractor. So what we do is we'll work with uh, a lot of the big houses, so Ford, Chrysler, GM, DTE, consumers. As they start putting the grid in for electrical vehicles, we're the ones that will come in and do the engineering, kind of tell them what are the uh, EV charges they want to have, if it's a level two, level three, uh, or fast charger, and then we uh, go back and implement and put that in, in place. So a lot of work going on. Probably in the last three years, we've probably put in about 200 different EVs across South Wisconsin. Wow. That's it? <laughs> <laughs> well, more is coming though. So we got... Yeah. Um, uh, all the dealerships are going through. We've done some at GM. We got a project going on at Avis Ford right now, putting in about 10 uh, electro chargers. As they start uh, bringing more EV uh, products to the market, they got to make sure when they bring them in, they're charged and ready to go to the clients. Now, we all know for so many reasons, EVs are the future. There's still a lot of questions, though. Not everyone has made the transition yet. There are fears and concerns about maybe range anxiety or just the general know-how of something that's so new. Do you think having all of this, we've got charger stations all over the place, EVs that you can actually get in, do you think that helps people to sort of get over that hump and understand what this new age is about? Absolutely. One, one of the things we did here between NECA and IBEW is we came up with this EV learning center. Mm -hmm. And it's really to educate the uh, consumer in terms of, you know, what does that mean for me? And what kind of range do we get? What I'm going to do in terms of at my home or at my facility to make sure we can have EV charge and have it in the numbers that people feel comfortable that I'm not going to run out of the juice and get to my destination. So this is all about learning, the, uh, uh, teaching the public, kind of get some, some information about it so that we can kind of maybe calm their nerves in terms of will the infrastructure be there to kind of really really be available for them to go to an EV product. And is that really the biggest misconception about going to EVs? Uh, that, that, that is one of the bigger ones. Um, uh, there's a couple of things that we talk about. We talk about is the is the electrical grid uh, 
big enough to handle all the, the large... Common question. Yes. It's a big conversation. Yes. Common question. If you look at what consumers in DTE in our area here, they're spending a lot of money and they're also looking at using like LED insulation rebates because they want to use less power inside the houses so we have more power to kind of, to kind of fuel the infrastructure. So you'll see that going on. Um, yeah, it's going to take some time, but uh, you know we got some smart people at these uh, electrical suppliers that yeah. we're working very close with, yeah. and a lot of great products that's coming out. You got Altel, you got Fist, you got uh, Vahea, which is a, 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 a SaaS platform that kind of controls it all. So you got all this stuff going on that really going to make this uh, an, an, out, an outstanding time for us. Yeah. Well, the future is bright and very electric as we see. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, Kelvin. Thank you. Very good to talk right. to you. Thank you very much. Now let's go to Sandra Ali over at the Ford exhibit. Hey, Sandra. Hey there, Jeff. You know, earlier when we were talking about Charity Preview and what a big party it is, obviously it's all about the glitz, the glamour, the fashion, the red carpet. But so nice this year, the music is absolutely electric. So joining me now are these lovely ladies who we just bumped into from the Detroit Youth Choir. And you ladies actually helped get the party started here tonight. Tell me who you are. I'm Brianna. Brianna. I'm Jada. Jada. I'm London. London. Trinity. Trinity. Okay, what was it like to get the party started here tonight? It was very fun. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, I love the audience. <laughs> and we, we know that you guys practice all the time and you're always performing, but how long have you worked on getting ready for the charity preview for tonight? Um, it, we just came off summer break, so not that long, but we work super hard when we do go to rehearsal, so about maybe three hours or so um, on the weekday. But tomorrow we have a five-hour practice for more performances coming up. Very exciting. Okay, so you worked for a while to get ready for tonight. What's it like being in front of an audience like this one here tonight? I mean, these guys are, they it's electric. You can feel the electricity in the air. You've got a big crowd. Everyone's dressed up. There had to be some pressure. Um, for me, I wouldn't say there was a lot of pe pressure because I'm really used to performing. And so it was just like really a lot of other crowds. It, but definitely like being at the auto show, knowing I'm in my hometown and everything, it was really great for me to perform. And, and what's perform. it like? It is different when you're in your hometown. I mean, this is the Detroit party of the year. So here you are performing in front of all of your friends and all these folks who came out to support the city of Detroit. Um, it was really fun. I was like just excited to see everyone like Detroit here with us. And I really enjoyed performing. So it was really nice. Well, what a fantastic way to kick the party off and get things started. Thank you so much, ladies, for stopping by. We appreciate it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and send it now to Kelly and Lauren, and they are at Lincoln. Hi, ladies. Hey, Sandra. Yes, we are at the Lincoln display, and uh, we have a pretty sexy, can I say sexy? I think you can. We have a pretty sexy car behind <laughs> us. We also are joined by Raymond Patterson, and Raymond, you're going to tell us all about this display, and I must say, you look sharp, and I love your glasses. I appreciate that. Glasses are my little touch. Love that. Welcome to the Lincoln display. Now, what we're talking about here, this beautiful vehicle, is our redesigned uh, Lincoln Nautilus. So we've had the Nautilus in the line for a while, but it's been long overdue for an upgrade. This upgrade is a fabulous upgrade for one because, again, we are, we are going into your power sanctuary. So we're going to appeal to those senses of sight, sound, massaging seats, um, we've got all that come in, and then the one new thing that we do have are digital scents. So you're going to have the ability to, to freshen the interior of your cabin with these scents. Ooh, I love that. What it's, kind of scents? I'm sorry. Yeah, no, 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 go ahead. What kind of scents? Scents with hints of floral and hints of patchouli. Ooh. Absolutely. And so are, is this like a um, like a, a like a oil type of thing? Like how does it? Yeah, aromatherapy. No, that's what I'm going to be missed. So you're going. To be, they call them digital scents because you're going to access them through the center console to the screen. So you're going to be able to mist the interior. Ooh, there's some, like, technology. I love it. I'm here for that. I love it. Now, I'm stuck on these um, massaging seats because I thought heated seats were, like, the ultimate luxury. Now yes. there's a step up. Tell love me about that. that. Oh, heated seats were sold last year. Okay. Sell us here, Kelly. Sell <laughs> I don't even have here. those in my car. <laughs> we're doing heated, ventilated seats and massaging seats. 24-way adjustable. We call them perfect position seats. Ah. 
Uh, okay, and so this is just such a beautiful car, and so many people are here ogling Absolutely. at it. I, I, expound on the, uh, the 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 sanctuary piece of, of, of the brand. Sanctuary? Yes. Absolutely. If you notice, well, when you get an opportunity to actually look at it, one thing that's new on here, we have a 48-inch digital display that goes from the entire length of the dash. Now, in terms of the sanctuary, again, it's the sights, it's the ambient lighting. Wait, wait, so it's a digital dash. Oh, absolutely. Oh, Drake oh, talked yeah. about digital dash. He, he, yeah, okay. All the way across the front, like <laughs> it's the from that's driver beautiful. to passenger. From I just saw. Oh, I love it. Okay. Indeed. So you have that, <laughs> and you knows. have the sight, which is the ambient lighting. You have the choice of setting the tone of your interior vehicle, choosing one of seven available colors. So all of that is, is creating that power of sanctuary. So we want you to be calm in there. We want you to be confident in there. We want you to have a serene surround. Absolutely. Okay, now I've got a hard news beautiful. question. What do you think hard this car will do to reduce um, road rage incidents? Because if you're so calm, That's that could be helpful, right? It's going to be helpful, absolutely. So those people that are screaming at next to you in the car next to you, you're not even going to acknowledge them. Because you've got your car smelling good, you're feeling good with the massaging seats, you're in heaven. Zen. Zen. A car that allows for some zen, especially on those long commutes. Yes. What went into this kind of rebranding and, and the idea to implement all of these things? Is this something you get back from uh, customers or how do you guys uh, come up with this? It's, it's research and their target customers. So they're all wanting the electronics or the technologies inside. So to have what we call Lincoln Blue Cruise 1.2 is allowing you to take your hands off the steering wheel in certain sections of highways across the U.S. So that, what they're doing is they're doing their research and they're asking folks these questions. What do you want in your car? Because we spend a lot of times in our cars, right? Going back and forth to work, taking the kids around, going out to dinner, those things. So we want this to be as relaxing as it is in your living room. Love that. Will it keep the kids calm? That's my biggest question. I have two. Two little ones. Well, to be totally honest, that's between you and the kids. <laughs> Good answer, Raven. Just, Good answer. Just with some mist <laughs> when right. Get this mist going in there. Calm down, guys. We need you calm. All right. Well, this is a car Pete, you'll look good in also. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys so, so <laughs> thank much. Thank you so much, Raven. <laughs> um, stay with us because we're checking out a lot more here at the Charity Preview event. Yes, yes. And we cannot wait. So there's that. Welcome back to the annual Detroit Auto Show, the Charity Preview. We are now joined by Paul Benas from the IBEW Local 58 and Nika. Thanks for being here with us. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me, and uh, what a great night. I mean, charity for the, the children of Detroit, this is this is the biggest event in the city by bar none, you know, yeah. and, and we're proud to be part of it, the IBW and NECA. It's such a great event. You see so many people out here dressed to the nines, having a great time, getting a look at all the cars and the show has to offer your group individually. Just what do you guys do for the entire industry? Well, first of all, you know, um, we're, we're electricians, right? So putting this show together, that's all our members, our brothers and sisters that put this show together. And then obviously we're sponsoring the EV track and all the chargers, because a lot of people, the general public, when you go ask, how do I get a charger, they have no idea. So we just, we're putting the display up here, you know, so everybody can come by and say, hey, how do I get a charger? And, you know, that's what we're here about, because we got the best trained electricians, brothers and sisters in the country, and with our partners, Nika, nobody can touch us. I mean, what a moment in history to be an electrician. What does it feel like to be at this vanguard moment where EVs are the future, they're taking over, and you can see it here tonight. I mean, it's all anybody is talking about is the future of electric. Well, to be an electrician right now, it is like, uh, it's a godsend, right? Yeah. Because with the, the world changing technology, going green and that, it's our turn, right? And everything's going electric. Yeah. And that's what we're here. We can do everything from EV charging, to solar, you name it, you know, that's what we're all about. And we're the best trained, best qualified, safest electricians in the country. And I might be biased, but <laughs> I'm going to tell you, we are. That's pride. We like yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We talked yeah. about this at the top of the hour, just the difficult decision that the UAW had to make to go on strike last night at midnight against the Detroit Big Three automakers and GM, Ford, and Stellantis. Do you just feel for just the tough 
choices that they had to make and the decision that they had to make to go on strike as we kick off the auto show? Oh, of course. You know, uh, the, the timing is everything, right? Uh, the auto show and the, the end of their contract and that. And, you know, solidarity is what it's all about. And we stand hand in hand with the UAW. You know, we work, we're, we're partners. You know, we build their plants. We help maintain their plants. We do the changeovers in their plants. So what they get, we get. So we're in solidarity with them. And good luck, brothers and sisters of the UAW. Oh, I'm sure they appreciate that. What does it mean to you to be a part of IBEW Local 58, Mika? Well, you know, it, it, it was a career change for me. I was one of those kids that, you know, went to college and, you know, was kind of lost and blah, blah, sure. blah, blah, blah. But becoming a, a construction electrician or any of the building trades, you know, getting into that field, which is just ginormous, everybody's looking for help, career changing. Kind of a you know? shortage, right? There aren't enough oh, people. There's not enough people, and, you know, you get into the apprenticeship program, you get a career, you get a future, you get a pension, you get health care, and, you know, just the opportunities are yeah. just phenomenal. Trade school, that sounds like job security. Jobs, jobs, jobs. Yeah. That's what we're all about. <laughs> and career. We're a career yeah. oriented business. Let's talk about what's going on behind us. You can see it behind us all night. We have the powering EV situation going on, experience if you want to call it. Tell us about what people will experience when they come down to the Detroit Auto Show here at Huntington Place and what they'll experience out here. Oh, the, the, you know, we have an electric F-150, a Lightning, right? And the uh, just, just the experience of that vehicle is amazing. I mean, it's coming. They're not stopping. and. You got to come out, drive one. I mean, it's it's like anything else that we drive. You know, it's got a steering wheel, four tires, it turns. But just the experience, the acceleration, the quietness, and all the features, it's just phenomenal. It's it's like, as we were kids, right? The Jetsons, right? It's coming. <laughs> we're here. The we're here. future is now. Yeah. We are right here. Paul, yep. thanks so much for joining us today for all you guys do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate, Appreciate your time. And we are going to head yeah. now to Chris, who's over at the Jeep display. Hey, Chris. Yeah, hey, Shane and Jeff. That's right. We're in the Jeep display, and I found Fred Hunter from the Detroit Police Athletic League. Thanks a lot for coming by and joining us, Fred. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Glad to be here. You know, you having a great time down here? Having fun. It's just good to see the uh, cars, good to see the people, so uh, having a good time. Yeah, there's a lot of interactive displays down here. Jeep has one where you get really rocking and rolling. Have you tried that one out yet? I haven't, but it's next. Yeah, it's just fun. It's like an amusement park. You know, you want to get on the rides and uh, have some fun while you're here. You definitely want to do that. No, we're all down here because this charity gala raises money for children charities. It's such a great event. $100 million in the last 20 years. I think $125 million since the inception of the uh, the charity event. Why is that so important to an organization like yours? Yeah, well, we're focused on the mission. You know, our mission is helping youth find their greatness. So when you have events like this that give you dollars so that you as uh, programmers and as a, a nonprofit can you're really focus on the kids in the community, it helps you. It gives you that, uh, that boost in terms of uh, what you do and how to make things and take things to a higher level. Well, let's talk about the Detroit Detroit Police Athletic League for a minute. Give us a little history on that. Yeah, it started in 1969, so 54 years of history, started by police officers. So if you imagine 1969, there was uh, not good relations with the uh, police and the community. So what they said is let's serve kids. Let's use athletics as the primary focus, but then let's also bring enrichment in other ways to uplift the community. And what it's done is lifted up kids, but it's also helped the relationship between police officers and the community. And you played a little ball back in the day. Now you're really mentoring kids. What's that mean to you? How does it make you feel to know you're making impact on so many kids' lives? Yeah, I know how important sports were for me, you know, just from what I was able to achieve, but most importantly, what you learn from sports, the goal setting, the resiliency, embracing a healthy lifestyle. So for us, it's knowing that the potential in young people is unendless. They can accomplish things, and we're working with volunteers that are lifting them up, that are mentoring, that are, that are seeing them as who they can be, so we know we're making a difference in the lives of young people, and that's uh, what's inspiring about the work. Yeah, and a lot of young people you're making a difference for. Now, talk about that great facility you have in Corktown where Old Tiger Stadium used to be. That is a beautiful park. Yeah, we're thankful. It was a wonderful project where the community came together, just like here, to say Tiger Stadium and the old uh, uh, the old histories and memories need to move forward. So we're able to have that, uh, that wonderful F-150 
paper. And uh, it's nice now because you see kids that come excited about the field. And you see parents that come that have the memories as well. So we're excited for the legacy, you know, for Detroit with that ballpark. A couple of great programs that Pal has going that I want to touch on. One is Girls Changing the Game. Yeah, we know the power of sports, and especially for young ladies. 94% of C-suite CEOs had a sports background. So what we know is as we're investing in the, uh, the girls that are in our program, girls who change the game become women who change the world. And we're excited about the work and excited about you know, who they'll become and how they'll lift up our, lift up our city. And we got to mention this, everybody loves to save a buck. That's, we all know that. Now you have a great coupon book coming out. Tell us what that has in it. Yeah, it's one of a partnership. So it's a, a company coming together and say, hey, let's help Detroit Power with their mission. So, so KFC, you know, all around Metro Detroit, you can go into uh, one of the participating stores and for a dollar, you get $30 of savings. But what those dollars do is they add up and help us for furthering our mission. So it's a great partnership focused on helping the community. All right, you've walked around a little bit. You picked out your next car yet? Um, there's some good ones. We're right here in Jeep, and uh, we've got some good Fords and some good GMs. So uh, we see a lot of ones that we like. And just great to be here in the Motor City and I have this special event to help raise funds for uh, good charities and the work we do. Yeah, a fantastic event and glad you're a part of it and glad the Police Athletic League is a part of it as well. Thanks a lot for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Appreciate the opportunity. Okay, you might have noticed Sandra ditched me because she hooked up with Lauren and Kelly and they're in the VIP lounge, I believe. You ladies. Where else would we be? <laughs> Except for the VIP lounge. Absolutely. This is the assignment for the ladies. So Kelly mentioned we are in the VIP lounge and you know what? We're going to give you a live look because you've got to see this. We are looking at some gorgeous fabulousness here. You have Porsche, Mercedes Benz, Audi, Infiniti, Jaguar, Land Rover. Should I continue ladies? I'm doing just shopping just right keep now, going. Do you there have your favorites? I mean there is a lot of I candy here. We've got, let's continue, Maserati, Bentley, Aston Martin, Rolls Royce. Oh, and then down there a little bit farther, we've got Volvo and BMW, you All know. Right, we're just going to do some shopping here, pick out something for the Christmas list, but we'll uh, come back right after this break with more from the auto show. Welcome back to our coverage of the Auto Show Charity Preview. Jeff Skaberski alongside Shana Humphreys here at Huntington Place in downtown Detroit. What a night. We've talked about it all night long. Yeah. The amazing amount of charity that is taking place tonight. Over $100 million has been raised over the last 25 yep. years for children's charities across southeastern Michigan, from Detroit Pal to the Boys and Girls Club. Just a remarkable event. And of course, tomorrow, the event will be open to the public, so everyone else beginning at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning can come by and begin checking out all of the beautiful vehicles. It really is such an incredible event, and you see why people rave about it so much. This is my first charity preview, and I see what the hype is about. I mean, the energy here is crazy, and I believe we have another camera walking around the floor here, so we want to show you a little bit of what we're seeing, just the most beautiful displays and so many beautiful people dressed to the nines, checking it all out. My eyes keep being drawn over to the Lincoln display. There's so many, all the different automakers have different setups and it's really just gorgeous. Again, it opens to the public tomorrow. So there's a lot for people to check out and even hands on, get in cars, ride around. There's so much to do. I love the experiences. And as you look around at the different exhibits from GMC to Ford to Buick, of course, the Lincolns looked amazing as we walked in yeah. earlier this afternoon. It hit us really right in the face. The first yeah. cars that we saw, those beautiful Lincolns, the, of course, Volkswagens and Audis and Toyotas. A little bit of something for everyone because you're seeing these futuristic cars sure. that look like they can fly. I believe there is a flying car actually somewhere around here. I need to go check that out. But also vintage vehicles. There are some pretty cool ones just over there. And I'm going to just mill around. And there's so much to see. A little bit of something for everyone. You know, last year there was the, remember the Ghostbusters? Yeah, car? classic. That was here. <laughs> Talk about classic cars from the movies. Yeah. That was here. And the future cars, it really feels like we're becoming the Jetsons, right? Right. George Jetson, it feels like we're <laughs> headed in that direction. Yeah, <laughs> flying around. I mean, it's so much fun. You can hear the tires just peeling around us. I really want to hop in one of these uh, pretty soon, and a lot of people are taking advantage of it. I think we are ready to send it over to Sandra, or maybe Chris, over at Jeep. Oh, 
All right, we're going to hang on for a second while they're getting situated. It's really such a huge, we're at Huntington Place, and it's a huge event. They're traveling around on the floor from the different displays and need a little bit of extra travel time somewhat because it's so crowded. It is absolutely packed, and year in and year out, this creates so much money for the economy. It is one of the yeah. biggest auto shows in North America, really a special yeah. place where people from all around the world, all around the country come to see the next best thing in the car industry. And where better to do it than the Motor City? It just makes so much sense. All right, we're going to head over to Sandra now, who is in the kid zone. Jeff and Shana, you know what? We have promised you all night that we were going to talk to you about children's charities and how much money is raised because really this is that's what it's all about here. It's all about raising money for children's charities. And joining me now is Luann Thomas Ewald. She is the COO of Mott Children's Hospital. Talk to me about what an important night this is for children's charities. Well, we're just so excited to be one of six charities that benefits from tonight. And what we do at CS Mott Children's Hospital is really use those funds to help kids and families when they're in the hospital. We do everything we can to try to keep the kids distracted. We try to keep them happy. We know they don't feel well, but if we can give them a teddy bear, if we can give them a book, if we can have our staff play on an iPad with them to help distract, that's what we're gonna do. And that's what we use these funds for. And I know the other five charities do something similar to really make sure that we're making an impact on kids in our own community right here at home. And you know, it's so interesting that when you come to a, an event like this, it's like one of the biggest parties of the year, right? And folks mark it on their calendar. And it's about the fashion and the glitz and the glamour, and tonight especially the music. But you can't forget about the whole reason why we're here. And when you talk about how important this is for people in the city of Detroit. It, it really is. And, you know, we're, we're running into friends and colleagues and friends of friends. And the excitement is just so high here tonight. And I think part of it is, is because we know why we're all here tonight. And it's about the cars and it's about the glitz and it's about the glamour. But we know that what we're doing tonight is helping kids throughout our state. And so it's just, it's a good feeling for all of us. And, and we're just so happy to be here. Thank you so much. Thank Luann, you, I appreciate it. Much more coming up after a break. it has been here at the 45th annual auto show charity preview this has been so fun and the best part is this is all just kicking off we've seen so much tonight and all of you at home who have been joining us tonight should come by starting tomorrow it's open to the public yeah beginning at 10 a.m going through september 24th open to the public every day at 10 a.m of course tonight we close with our entire CBS News Detroit team. We have Kelly and Lauren and Sandra and, of course, Chris. What is your favorite part tonight? What are you looking forward to most as we sign off? Personally, I want to go on that um, Jeep tour. Yes. It looks like you're going straight up and straight down like a roller The coaster. rides, all yeah, the fun stuff. Cool. Cool. I really like that Lincoln. I like the zen aspect of it. Need that for the kiddos. As a mom, need that. Love that. Look, I'm here for the people watching yeah. because the crowds are absolutely tremendous. I love seeing everyone all dressed up, so I'm looking forward to more people watching. I'm looking forward to getting a glass of wine. That's what yeah. I'm looking forward to. <laughs> there you so go. That's my next stop. I better I better, I better Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. It is a beautiful crowd and a beautiful event. We want to thank all of you so much for joining us tonight on the CBS News app and Pluto TV, and we hope you come on by to the auto show. Have a great night, everyone. Good night.